So we are going to do the 2019 AMC 12A problem 15. Positive real numbers A and B have the property that square root log A plus square root log B plus log square root A plus log square root B equals 100. And all four terms on the left are positive integers. What is AB? In this case, log is denoting the base 10 logarithm. So I don't really know where we can start this problem at first, but what I do see is this log square root a, and I know that we can write that as a to the one half power. So we could rewrite this equation as square root log a plus square root log b, and then log square root b, well that's log of b to the one half, which means in this case we can pull out the one half power. So we have one half log a plus one half log b equals 100. But this equation is still kind of confusing. We have this log a square root log a. Well, here's the thing. There's no kind of fancy manipulation we can do to get rid of the square root and the log, especially because we have two of them. If we square it, we're still going to be left with the square root of two of these logs multiplied together, which is not very nice. But what we do know is that these are both positive integers. So for example, square root log a equals k, where k is some positive integer. What if we took this whole equation in terms of k instead of a? That would get rid of all these square roots and logs. Well, that would mean k squared is log a. Well, that means we can substitute this in. This is k. This is k squared. Then we can get rid of all the logs, all the square roots. And we can do the same thing with b, too. Square root log b equals n, which means we can take this, n squared equals log b. Now we're getting somewhere. So let's go back to this equation. This right here is k, this is n, and then we have 1 half log a is k squared, log b is n squared, this equals 100. Okay, now this 1 half is kind of annoying, so let's multiply everything by 2. So we have 2k plus 2n plus k squared plus n squared equals 200. Now what we see in this equation is we have k squared plus 2k, and we have n squared plus 2n. And that reminds me of the formula for k plus 1 squared. This is k squared plus 2k plus 1 but we don't have a plus one on this side. However, we can get a plus one if we just add one to both sides of the equation. So if we go over to the other side and say, let's have our 200 and then add one. That means we get k squared plus 2k plus one. That's k plus one squared. We can do the same thing for n. We'll get n plus one squared. This is n squared plus 2n plus one. So we add another one to the right side of the equation. And now on this side, 200 plus 1 plus 1, that is 202. And now we have an equation that we know how to solve because we know all of the terms on the left, this k and this n, are both positive integers. So we know this is an integer squared, this is an integer squared, they add to 202. So let's list out some of the squares. 1, 4, 9, 16. and 196. So these are all of the perfect squares that are less than 202. And let's see if we can combine any of these to get 202. How about we start from the biggest one and see if each one of them applies. So let's look at 196. If one of these numbers is 196, say k plus 1 squared is 196, well that means if we subtract 196 from each side, we know that n plus 1 squared is going to be 202 minus 196. If we do that, our answer is just going to be 6. Well, is 6 a perfect square? I don't think so. That means 196 is not our answer. Let's keep going. 169. If we do 202 minus 169, that's going to be 33. 33 is not a perfect square. That's not our answer either. All right, let's keep going. Well, what about 202 minus 144? 
Well, I don't know what that is, but I know that if we take something that ends with 2, subtract something that ends with 4, we're going to end up with something that ends in 8, because 8 plus 4 is going to give us this 2 on the end. Do any of the perfect squares end in 8? Nope. That's not our answer either. All right. What about 202 minus 121? 2 minus 1 is 1. 20 minus 12 is 8. 81. Is 81 a perfect square? Yes, it is. That's 9 squared, which means these are the perfect squares we want to use. So which one's k and which one's n? Well, it doesn't really matter because we want to find a, b, which means because multiplication is commutative, it's the same as ba. So which one is k and which one is n? Doesn't really matter. Let's say k plus 1 equals 11, and n plus 1 equals 9. So 11 squared is our 121, 9 squared is our 81. That means k equals 10, n equals 8. And we're almost there. Now we just have to go back to a and b. So let's plug each of these into our equations here and figure out what a is. So for this one, k squared is 100 equals log a. And for n, n squared, 8 squared is 64 equals log b. So if we do to 10 to each side, that means we get a equals 10 to the 100 and b equals 10 to the 64. Well, if we do a times b, 10 to the 100 times 10 to the 64, we can add the powers, which means a, b equals 10 to the 100 plus 64. 10 to the 164. And that is our answer.